how to turn your old iMac into a usable display. Now we're gonna go over a couple ways of doing this without opening it up, and then we're gonna show the entire process of making the custom LCD and making this work without the actual computer involved. But if you don't wanna do this and you don't wanna open up your computer, there are ways around it, and there are some usable designs, and we'll go through those during the video. Now first thing is all the things that you're gonna need before you even start. So first up, you need something to cut the iMac open. And we're gonna use a little pizza plastic cutter dude, and the reason I like that, one, it's not metal, it's not gonna scratch anything up, but it also comes up with the adhesive so you can actually re-glue this back together and for eight dollars you really can't be beat so all of these things are going to be listed down below so you'll have all the links that you need then you're going to need what's called a driver board now that's going to actually display the image and it's going to connect your computer to the lcd now before you go out and purchase one especially the one that i linked in the bio you need to pay attention on the back of your mac what model number that you have. So if you have what mine is, which is a 5K iMac, it's an A1419, then you can pick the same exact board and you shouldn't have any issues. But just make sure that you pick the driver board that's matched up with your iMac. Don't buy the one that I have if you have an older Mac and so on. And sometimes with older Macs, you might wanna use software or a Luna display. Those things can be really usable, especially when it's not a 5K iMac. Now to do the teardown, you're of course gonna need like a little iFixit kit or something of the sort. It's gonna be a torque set and it goes all the way up to a T25 in this build series. Now I'm actually using the display right now to look at my camera and I kid you not, it is beautiful. It works for the camera and it's way better than my previous monitor. Now this is a little guy that you're gonna need. It doesn't come with the power supply so you need a standard barrel connector and this is a 12 volt 5 amp and then also if you need the model number, it's an LW-060. What's really cool about this project is you can plug anything into it. Right now I've got my camera set up and it looks beautiful so it can work with your camera, your PlayStation, your other MacBook, anything of the sort, and you have HDMI, DisplayPort, USB-C, and it'll even charge your MacBook, which I thought was pretty cool. Now we can start tearing this thing down. Next time I'll film this all in one video. I apologize, these are all shorts that are stitched together. We're gonna grab our adhesive cutter and we're gonna slide it in between the glass and the aluminum here. Now when using this tiny little tool, it's gonna go all the way in. So you wanna make sure you go all the way through the adhesive and you want this to lie flush. Now you're gonna start with the sides and the top and then we're gonna pull the display because we need to unplug cables before we do the bottom. Keep in mind when you're wiggling it and doing this, you want one hand on the display. Once it releases, it's coming down. So once you get the sides and the top done, you can actually use the bottom as a little shelf and we're gonna start peeling the glass backwards. You'll feel it release and then we can get to the cables. Okay, so now I'm recording the glasses. So we're holding the display and everything together with our left hand. Now we're switching to the glasses so you can get a better look, but there's two cables that you must remove before you actually take the glass out. The first one has a little pull tab that you're gonna just lift up and the cable will release. So this is the connector that connects the monitor and there's a little flap right here and you can see it. It's facing down when you get in there and you're just gonna push it up, but you're gonna use some tweezers, grip it and then flick it up and then it'll come right out. So this is the other connector. And you see those little pointy things right here and there's one on the other side you're pushing those into itself so you're going to be like this and pushing it in and then you can pull it out we're using this tool to slip in and it's not going to be cutting it like this you almost have to go in at like a 40 degree angle and if you go from the edge and just do this you can start to see it pop and you'll see that in the camera on the glasses and we're basically done i can feel it released so if you go vertical and then move it to a place that you need, but when you pick it up like this, you're gonna have some flex here. So unless you have some other stability from another person, I don't like picking these up like that. And we have the display. Now to be safe, you gotta watch out for this bottom left area. That's the power supply and it has exposed leads. So we're gonna wear some gloves just so we can make sure to insulate ya. The first thing we're gonna remove is the cooling fan. It's got three screws and one cable, and then you can just place that on the side once we get this thing out. Get that cable out, and now... Now this left speaker has two screws and a cable attached to the motherboard, so we'll unscrew this so we have more room for the actual hard drive. The hard drive isn't held in by anything but little studs. We're just gonna remove the screws so we can wiggle it out, and then we can remove the cable for the hard drive. So once you're doing this bottom screw, you wanna hold onto this, because it's gonna drop out. We can get this, move this out of the way, and this is gonna unplug the actual hard drive. Now that we have the hard drive removed, if you're not gonna use this for anything but a monitor, you can either sell these parts or use them. This is a hard drive that you can use to store some old data. Now the power supply has four screws and four cables, two on the front and two cables on the back. The first cable is on the top left. It's really easy to remove. Just use a plastic spudger and then push it off. That connector is out. Now the next cable is on the right hand side and I'll show you exactly how to remove it and how it works. Push in and pull out. That's how these connectors work, push in, pull out. Now to get to the last two cables, we're gonna have to rotate the PCB and you'll see that right here. And once we remove it, I'll actually show you how those two cables attach so you can easily remove it when you're behind it. So for the top right cable, you're gonna do this while the PCB is still attached. You're gonna push down and pull out and I'll show you that here. This is the top power supply connector. You're just gonna get that little lip, 
push down, pull. Now we can pull the power supply out and get to that last cable. You just rotate it out, pull. But these are the caps right there, and we can even show you how to discharge them with the multimeter. So you're gonna hook them up, and you can either do it a couple ways. Some multimeters actually have a setting so you can discharge, but you would put one pole, one pole on your multimeter, and then you can go into ohms, and that's actually gonna pull a resistance, and you shouldn't have any issues as long as you don't have the world's cheapest multimeter. Now we can remove the left speaker, and just be aware we still have a cable that's attached to the motherboard that we need to remove. Now just watch out for the small little cable on the bottom left. This will just come right out of the groove. Now we do have this cable right here which goes in and you see what I'm doing is I'm putting it in between, pushing that little lip in and then I'm lifting. It's that simple. And then we go to the other side and pull. So right here we have the webcam and we have this ribbon cable. We're gonna have to take this out, but we're gonna take the entire webcam out. Now you can buy replacements that will go through and you can use it as like a USB webcam that will connect. Now, if you're only going to use this as a monitor, just make sure you keep all the parts together and screws. That way, if you want, you can sell this on eBay or anywhere else locally. Now, we're going to turn our attention to the right speaker. We're going to take off these two screws, and then we'll take off the attached cables. So, this guy's the same as the left speaker. We're going to get in here, push in. Just be careful not to hit any of the components like this. And there we go. Next, we're just going to take care of this little cable. It just pops off. So, you're just going to get a spudger and pull it towards yourself. Like that. Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, that all runs up here to the top. You just go up next to it, pop it off. Go up next to it, pop it off. So this is what's holding those guys in. Now we don't need to remove these. We're gonna take everything out, but if we're gonna salvage and sell all of this, we wanna make sure we keep all these parts together, including the screws. Now doing screws like this that have been just hanging out for a long time, you wanna push, give it a little force, slow, break it loose, and then you can do your spinnies. So we're going across the logic board and unscrewing all the screws that attach to it. Now there is one that you might miss that you really need to pay attention to because this one doesn't even look like a screw, but it is. So pay attention to the hole that is right in the middle of the logic board. This is actually a screw point. So you want to make sure you have a long skinny screwdriver and that way you can reach the back of the iMac case because without the screw, you're not taking the logic board out. Now one of the old hard drive brackets is actually a standoff and it's a screw point. So this is a T25 Torx and you can also use pliers to go ahead and twist this off. You can do either or, I recommend the T25, but it can be easier with pliers. And then we have some screws up here. Now I think you can break loose, the, yeah you can, break loose the logic board. Now this ribbon cable at the very bottom is very delicate so be careful, but it does have a pull tab that you can just pull straight down and it'll release out of that port. You see this heat sink? We have a screw right here and then we have a screw here. Now, before you yank on the actual logic board itself, give it a little wiggle. Make sure you didn't miss any screws because you'll feel the point in which it's attached to the actual case. But if it's free like mine is, you can start to pull upwards. And there's standoffs that are actually attached to the logic board. You can pull from there and then just wiggle it out. It'll be super simple. Just be careful when you're doing it. Now, personally, I'm going to use this with my dual monitor arm. So I recommend if you want to use a VESA plate, you're going to have to add that just like this. The first step is we got to remove the stand so we can see what we're working with. I do have a VESA plate that we can customize this to, but we got to remove all the previous hardware so we have a flat surface to work with. Another issue is all of these standoffs that are attached. So we have to remove all the hardware and standoffs so we have a flat surface. And I recommend doing this anyways because you're going to need more room when the PCB comes in. Now I'm just using some linemen to rip this stuff off. They come off pretty easy but you're going to use a bit of force. The silver lining to ripping all of this stuff off, it comes off fairly clean and if you really want to you can sand and polish that out but it's in the internals you really don't need to so I recommend just going ahead with it. These VESA plates are pretty easy to come by but I'll link the one that I used and we're going to use the original slit that the arm went through. So we're going to use that to our advantage. We're going to throw the VESA plate into a vise and then we can drill out the extra two holes. These are just in a straight line so you won't have any issues. And the good thing is with that slit you have some movability. We then added some washers for some extra stability and then we screwed the rest in. We finally got the driver board in today and we actually had some issues during shipping. The display adapter was bent but we were able to fix it and get this thing running. On the Mac it's showing up as a 5K display. We're getting 60 hertz. Everything's working flawlessly and it works with anything. Let's go over some of the issues if you order a board like this. You're not going to get a power supply. It's not labeled on what it takes and you have to figure all of this out but we did that for you. So the way we tackled this issue is we connected it to a power supply that you can choose the voltage and the amperage. This is going to run off 12 volt 5 amp. 
So you're just going to plug it in directly like this and force it in. And if you do it the opposite way, because there's no directions of which way is which, you'll be just fine. So first we got to do a test fit. We're going to add some command strips, throw this thing in here, make sure everything's good, and then we'll zip it up properly. Now the reason we're using command strips is to lift this board off. We're probably going to customize something later on, but make sure you do not touch the actual PCB against the metal. You need something that's going to insulate it. Now we're going to tape the glass to the case since we're not using the adhesive, and this is just a test. But this will get you exactly where you want to be, and if you want to do any customization or mods, but just stay tuned for the follow up because we'll do all the different things that we did. But overall, this thing works flawlessly. You can go through all the different resolutions. You can dumb it down. You can change the Hertz. It's showing up on all DisplayPort, HDMI and USB-C and it'll charge your MacBook. But so far, I think this is a success. And please, in the comments, let me know the future video and what you want to see.